Welcome back to our life for not forever and always beginning and always we're here about to go pick Liz up It took you a second to remember where you had put your stuff You needed to get it all in the car so you could get everything back to your hotel. Can I help? You shrugged and directed him to your bags with Cove, your moms, and yourself on the job. I only took one trip to the car to get everything. How much did I bring? Cove firmly closed the trunk. He thanked everyone for the assistance. Of course, kiddo Come along medley day family. Let's get in the car. Come on, Cove, let's go. You've been... Uh, okay, hair in my mouth. <laughs> You've been part of the Melody family for, family for years. Thanks. Exactly. Well said, Michiko. Alright, Cove climbed into the backseat with, with a decidedly touched expression on his face. You got in on the other side. When everyone was situated and buckled, the engine was started and Ma put up, pulled out onto the train. You're gonna help but feel amused to be stuck in the backseat with Cove. Your mom's driving you around. It really was like you were a little kids again. Cove caught you staring at him and gave you a bent smile. He was probably on the same wavelength as you from the sheer mischief in it. There was some light chatting on the drive. No one brought up anything too deep, and it mostly became swapping jokey stories. The entire trip was marked by a heavy sense of anticipation. Everyone was ecstatic to see Liz and hear what she had been up to. When you neared the airport, Mom pulled out her phone to call Liz. Mom followed the signs of the correct pickup area and asked for you to shout if you saw your sister. Yeah, Liz, we're at Wing B. There's a blue sign that says North America. All right. Tell her that we're right in front of the building with blue windows. She says that she's outside, right by a yellow truck. I say at least three yellow trucks. Hmm. I think they're doing work at the airport. We went back and forth continue with Ma driving around in the wide, circular airport road with Mom attempted coordination between her and Liz's location. Aha! He leaned forward, peering out of the front car. A tall, poised silhouette pulled a pur pale purple roll along suitcase behind her. It was definitely Liz. She waited to the car. Mom parked along the sidewalk next to her. And Mom pulled, put her phone away with a cheer. Mission accomplished, team. I feel like that's the most stressful fucking thing ever when you try to pick someone up from the airport. Mom excitedly reached over to grasp Mom's hand, raised hand, thrilled at that both of her kids were back. Good job. That's right. <laughs> Liz came closer and yanked open the back door beside her. She popped her head into the car, her smile ornery, despite how tired she appeared. It must have been a long trip for her, yet her expression was that same familiar smirk that smirk, a smoke, smirk that you had grown up with. Hey. Oh, Liz, you're so fucking pretty. Everyone's so goddamn pretty. <laughs> Hello, children, I'm back. <laughs> rude. Oh, hey, old grandparent who doesn't have any kids. <laughs> That's fucking rude. What the heck? I missed you. I would hope. He smiled at her, he reached over and hugged her, he poked her cheek, you took hold her hand, you shook her hand. Hug. You quickly unbuckled and then launched yourself at your sister. She wrapped her arms around you and squeezed. Well, hi to you too, kiddo. Hello, sweetie. It's so nice that you're here. Hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> you jokingly huffed at her. We're not children. Whatever you say, baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> she turned her gaze back to mom and mom. You really know how to make someone feel appreciated. Her spirits were high. You could tell she was just as happy to be here as everyone who was to see her. She left the door open but ducked out the, to walk around the back, around to the back of the car. She opened the trunk and lifted, lifted her luggage in. I'm gonna move your junk. <laughs> what the fuck? I'll keep it fr in front of my bags so and get it later. Mom's dropping out first, right? Yes, but that's not junk. It's important. Liz slammed the trunk closed without responding. Liz swung around to open the door. You noticed that her hair had a few flyaways, so no doubt from a long day of traveling. She leaned against the frame of the car, giving you and Cove a significant look. I'm not sitting in the middle. I already have five hours of that nightmare on the flight. There's no way I'm getting in between the two of you. I mean, really, who would ever want to be the person pulling Cove holding Michiko and Lady apart? Cove huffed up indignantly yet again at her classic tease of, her, <laughs> of your relationship. Let's continue to live along like she didn't notice. So? I don't care how you decide who's scooting. Well, I figure you can fight it out somehow. Cove glanced over at you and shrugged. He even buckled his seat and moved to the middle. Uh, I guess I'll always have a bossy big sister. I'm sorry, you're always in the middle, Cove. Some people just must get their way. Good job. I wasn't moving. Stay quiet. Thanks, Cove. I guess I'll always have a big, have a bossy big sister. Always. It's the law. It's more like Liz will never change. <laughs> exactly. Why would I need to? <laughs> but the window the open, Liz squished herself into the car and shut the door. When everyone was settled, Ma began to pull out. Let's go. We're off. Liz crossed her legs, compacting herself slightly. She braced most of her weight on the door behind her. Instead of sitting up straight, it gave her a little more room. 
Hopefully we finish the journey. This car is almost as old as we are. Now, now. And it's still just as good as you are. All the complaining definitely means Liz is back. We're equivalent to this junker. Hey, I love this old car. Just not even watch what was happening outside the window. <laughs> so it complains <laughs> with Chico. <laughs> We're just constantly back and forth. Mom turned up the radio as mom merging onto the highway. The station was familiar, the normal soundtrack for when she had driven you and Liz around town. Liz bounced in her seat, enjoying the classic tune. The song would be old enough to vote at this point if it was a person. That was hard to believe. With Liz, the conversation livened up despite it getting later and later in the night. She told you all about her week and all the travel preparations she's made. By the time she made it to the actual tell of travel itself, Liz started chuckling. On the plane, Liz had sat next to a couple of girls who had talked a lot about how well they could read people. Liz recounted their conversation with her in hilarious details. They had apparently tried to guess her occupation after only ask only shaking her hand. I thought they were gonna guess her like astrology sign or something. I cannot I don't know how people do that. Like at all. Cause I'm not into like astrologies like I don't believe in that much. But it's so strange when someone points out like, hey you're you're this, right? I'm like how how the fuck <laughs> how the fuck do you know that? Neither of the girls could agree with one another, and Liz had refused to just tell them. However, the drive to your hotel was was only so long. Eventually, your group arrived, yawned, and got out of the car when it stopped. Cove clambered out, of, out after you. Liz gave a loud sigh of relief at all the extra space she found herself with. You and Cove grabbed the luggage and then waved off your family after you said your goodbyes. After they left, you and Cove went to go find your room. Ah, oh, so nice. It's so, you know, very hotel-like. <laughs> You scanned the key card to unlock your hotel room. It sounded out as soft beep, and you turned the handle of the door. The door creaked open, then you craned your head in to take a look. The first thing you noticed was a large king-sized bed in the middle of the room. It was a prim, modern-looking space. It seemed clean and smelled faintly like floral air freshener. A smile played on Koa's face as they watched you take in the space. The bed's nice, huh? Which one of us is gonna use it? <laughs> What the fuck? He glared at me serious. Here we go again. Me, you can fend for yourself. No, it burst out laughing. That was a joke. Can you please share the bed? <laughs> yes, thanks. I got a good hotel, didn't I? Uh, you picked out a nice one. It was passable. I guess we'll manage. Thanks for handling this. I'd say it's nice. It's the same hotel I'd pick on. I would have picked on my own. It makes sense you'd go for this one. Looks like your room at Kyra's place. No, it doesn't. You know, I wordlessly approve. Uh, uh, yeah, you picked this, or thanks for handling this. Thanks for handling it. No problem. He'd be glad to have your appreciation. You and Co continued to chat as you settled in. You unpacked some of your stuff and checked out all the room's amenities. Co pointed out the mini fridge and started puzzling over what food could be ordered to the room. However, the fact was you both were exhausted. It didn't take too many yawns before you both changed into your pajamas and called it a day. You had to hunt along the wall to locate the light switch. When you finally found it, you flicked it off with a sense of triumph. Aw, you look so cute and casual. Oh, Cove. My f I still think my favorite, like, DLC- oh, I don't even know if it was a DLC one. The camping one in the woods when we were in the RV. I think that has to be my favorite one, so. You turned your head over to Cove and stood behind you in his pajamas. He was cozy and comfortable, but the pieces didn't match. He never minded that. I'm exhausted. We both need our beauty rest. Cove smelled a self-expression that was adorable. Right. Okay, let's go to sleep. Despite saying that it was bedtime, Ko took a step forward towards you. He wrapped his arms around your back and leaned you into his, in, into his embrace. Then he lifted you off your feet. What? <laughs> Still not putting you down, Ko promptly dropped himself backwards. The both of you crashed onto the tight, tucked sheets of the hotel bed. He laughed the entire time. Ko bounced on the landing and absorbed most of the impact. He laid on his chest, feeling a little jostled. <laughs> You giggled alongside him. You're an absolute madman. You could have warned me that I was scared of the suit again. He squatted his shoulder for that. <laughs> I giggled. That was unexpected, but almost absolutely thrilling. Your laughter only made him laugh louder. He smiled up at the ceiling. I thought clearly crystallizing. My dad used to do that kind of thing to me when I was little, sort of. Nostalgia was clear in his voice. It was a fond memory, and you felt something warm in your chest. I remember you talking about it when you stayed over at my house as a kid. He'd lift you up really high and bring you back down. Yeah, I have a cool dad. He made a small noise of understanding that turned into a yawn. When Cove yawned in return, you pulled out the sheets until you're actually under the blankets. Good night, Cove. Night. Don't let the bed bugs bite. The dreams you t stuck your tongue out at him playfully. 
idea. So do you know why <laughs> pigeons are called pigeons when they're actually doves? Aren't they? What? I didn't know that. Why would I stick my tongue out? Playfully. Oh, well, I mean, we are in a playful mood, no? Ghost snorted and scooted up so that he was more propped up on his pillows. Then he kissed his lips, then you kissed his... Oh, kiss nose kiss. Oh, forehead... God damn it! I'm gonna do a forehead kiss. Forehead kiss. You press your lips to his forehead, then draw back to his, drew back to see his cute grin, obviously enjoying his goodnight kiss. Cove wrapped his arms around you and snuggled next to you, let out a contented breath. You reached out to hold Cove under one arm and then used your other hand to comb through his hair. The two of you relaxed into one another, and you knew neither of you would want to be anywhere else. I can't believe we're really here. Hmm. You and Liz and everyone else are going to be here in Sunset Bird again. I was staring at all the scenery going by while we were driving here, and it honestly felt like we never left. He ran a hand down his face. I mean, in some ways it feels like it's been ages and everything's different. Some of that is definitely because I'm staying in a hotel instead of being in my room at Dad's. But yeah, it's so weird. It feels natural to me. I don't even know how to I feel. It's exciting. I just hope things go okay. You couldn't even put anything you felt into words. Um... It's so weird. It has to feel weird, right? Like, you're back in your hometown, but you're not... You're you're like a tourist since you're in a hotel instead of like living or staying over at your parents' house. Cove nodded. He understood completely. I'm looking... I yelled for an interruption to the statement. Cove was un undeterred. I'm looking forward to this. He tucked his head into your neck. You felt his lashes flutter close against your skin. Yeah, I can't wait. See you tomorrow. His words were a whisper you barely heard. It might not even have been that exactly. You might have just been guessing. Cove always had a habit of mumbling. It was okay either way, whether you heard it or only thought you heard. The sentiment was true regardless. Cove would see you tomorrow when he opened his eyes and the sunlight returned to your hometown as sunset bird. He comfortably drifted off to sleep and eagerly awaited seeing Cove tomorrow as well. Your eyes gently opened to see a dim, unfamiliar ceiling. You recalled where you were, a hotel room. Yawning, your muscles felt relaxed and warm enough that sleep threatened to pull you under again. Morning. Ko's voice brought you back to consciousness. The heat made sense now. You knew the comfortable weight against you was your boyfriend. His arm was draped around you and his fingers were lightly drawing shapes on your pajamas. You twisted over to face him fully. Morning, sleepyhead. Cove raised an eyebrow. His index finger drew a question mark across your back, pulling a giggle out of you. Mmm, you know what I meant. Have you been up long? He hooked you, you, not he. You hooked your heel around his calf and trailed up to the space behind his knee. He hummed contentedly. Not too long. You squeezed him adoringly in your arms. You snuggled against his chest, played his hair, gently you kissed him. You let off soft breath. Why am I doing all the kissing? <laughs> When does my girl just get kissed randomly, huh? Uh, I think I would snuggle. Pushing into him, he squeezed your face into his chest. The air knocked from, knocked from Cove's lungs came out in a light chuckle. Cove closed his eyes. His hand found the middle of your back again and he held it there, enjoying the closeness of the moment. Neither of you were making any moves to get up and actually start the day. It was sweet and comfortable to be wrapped, in, wrapped up in Cove. You couldn't indulge just a little longer. A little while longer? Whatever. Eventually, enough time flew by that there were there were, really weren't any minutes to spare. There were too many people waiting, so you both crawled out the sheets together. Oh, the pink uh, PJ pants. Standing up, Cove took a few seconds to stretch. He glanced over at you with an animated expression. I'm really looking forward to your mom's anniversary dinner tonight. It's gonna be fun. I think so too. I mean, this whole trip is great, actually. Being here with everybody is like having another chance at being a kid. We can do all the stuff we used to, and all the things we never did but wanted to. Yeah, the world is our oyster cove. I do not <laughs> want to think about being a little again. It's good to be back. Since the bird won't, won't know what hit it, he nodded. The world is our oyster cove. Jumping up on the bed, he stood in a power stance in the center. We run the course of our lives. We're in control of our destinies. Exactly. Well, we better get back to it, huh? We've got a pretty full schedule ahead of us for your mom's big day. He smirked. So much for being a kid, so many responsibilities. I don't think seeing our friends really counts as responsibilities, Michiko. Fine, you got me there. It's so nice to reconnect with your friends too. That's such a great feeling. After that, you and Cove moved around each other, busily getting dressed and ready for the day. Light laughter and chatter filled the air the entire time. Bags were packed and phones were sought after. 
instantly tossed Kobe's phone when he hadn't been able to find it. He handed Kobe's phone when he hadn't been able to slap Kobe's butt as <laughs> he stepped past you. You somehow lost a single sock, but Kobe found it behind the headboard. You shook your head at Kobe when he ran a hand through his hair instead of brushing it. Uh, slap Kobe's butt. Why not? <laughs> Kobe let out a small yelp. He met his eyes with an impish grin and he shook his head. Oh. Careful. His shyness melted away as he put it. What? <laughs> But I'm so anxious from you. I might have to do something re to return the favor. No. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> anyway, this is where we're stopping for today's episode. Um, next episode, hopefully we'll see our friends. Because that would be exciting to see. But thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful. And I'll see you guys in the next one.